So yeah, so question number one is who am I? So my name's Chris Foss. I've been a member of, or my family has been a member of Parkway for three years now, uh, coming up on three years. Uh, we're 1030 service uh, worship goers. I have two sons, uh, one 12, one 13. So they're both in the middle school ministries. Really that's one of the um, aspects that drew us to Parkway was the middle school ministries uh, or just the, the children's ministries. I was actually the cub master of the pack that uh, was here for a couple years. So before, we live in New Territory, so before we were part of the church, we were actually connected through many of the ministries that you who have been longtime members or you who are members today uh, that are servicing and supporting. Like, you draw people in uh, through the, your service and your gifts and your time and your talent. Um, and certainly the way that you worship and the way that you serve. It's a fantastic uh, body of believers to be a part of. Uh, I lead a men's Bible study. It's called The Lineman on Friday morning at La Madeline, the most manly place on the planet. Uh, you can have a men's Bible study, but they have got really good food. Coffee's just okay. Uh, but I lead a, a men's Bible study there. I've been a Sunday school teacher. Um, I've been, you know, a part of uh, different um, uh, uh, SPR, uh, staff parish relations, uh, other service ministries of churches that we've been a part of. Uh, but once upon a time, I wasn't wasn't connected. I didn't know. Um, and it was really intimidating uh, to come into a group of believers where I didn't have a way to figure out how to get up to speed. So that's where we're going today is a way for um, the um, folks who aren't connected to get connected. The folks who have been long time um, scripture junkies, right? The people who have been in and out of scripture, maybe to see some new things that you might have never seen before. Um, and then at the end of the day and then at the end of the nine weeks, our job is like what we do at Parkway to be better connected. Um, you will have an opportunity to meet a whole bunch of new people in here. I mean, this is a cross-section of folks. It's fantastic. Uh, and fantastic because there are people in here who are in these things called grow groups, what we do here at Parkway called small groups, um, that meet on all different nights of the week. I encourage you to talk about, or as you meet uh, folks, what grow group are you in? What night do you meet? Hey, who meets here at this point in time? How can I get connected? Uh, if you are one of those scripture junkies and have been in a long time uh, Bible study or have had a lot of passion uh, that God has put on your heart to connect with him through scripture, we are going to have little you know, turn your chairs around or talk to your neighbor next to you moments um, at the end of each one of these uh, sessions. And so don't be afraid. You don't have to contribute or ask, you know, but it's enriching conversation um, for those of you who may not have or might not be connected or might not know as much to be connected with somebody who uh, might be a little bit further along on their scriptural walk. So you, everybody's got a job in here to do, um, and your job is to participate. So uh, a couple things. Um, please ask questions if you have them, as much as we're able to run through these. I, the questions will be relevant for the people who aren't able to make it in person uh, as they're recording. Uh, well, I will keep a running par parking lot of things that are super important for us uh, to maybe click on or to uh, remember or remind us that it came up in a session. Um, and then uh, there is no knowledge or pre-work required. So this is what the schedule looks like. So yes, your pastor has a list of sermons uh, baked out that map exactly to the uh, sort of the preamble of what we're going to be talking about each week. And so the first two weeks are backgrounders. So we're going to um, go just a hair deeper on this idea of how, who is God and why does it matter as it relates to scripture. So the beginning of boot camp, we need to understand the author. Second week, we're going to go into what is the Bible and how can I trust it. And then we'll spend about four weeks going through some major arcs on the Old Testament, the book that as New Testament, 21st century Western world Christians, we might be a little bit intimidated by going to Hosea or Genesis or Leviticus or uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, places that we might have never ventured before or don't really know or understand. We're going to try to break down some of those arcs over four weeks. Uh, and then the balance will be the New Testament, uh, why was it written, Holy Spirit, and then the church. So we'll... Uh, um, talk about that. The one programming note I'll make a call to is that uh, we will not, the front end of spring break week, so for all of us uh, with kids, the front end of spring break week, week, March 11th, we will not have boot camp. So that'll be our off week. We will pick it up on the Sunday right before um, school comes back in, hoping that we don't have any other weather delays. So we're all good there. And then uh, we will wrap this up on uh, 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 right the week before Easter. That will be our last one. And we are right now looking at a, a boot camp celebration dinner. So all of the groups coming together uh, at the end of that boot camp session on a Sunday night to do a celebration dinner with everybody together. So programming notification that out of the way. 
All right, so um, each week we're, it's going to look like this. We'll have an opening activity. There'll be something on the screen. I would encourage as you come in to sit down and just make a, jot a couple notes down uh, on the uh, particular topic that's going to be up there. We're going to go through sort of the lecture, the Q&A part of what we're going to be talking about for the week. Um, and then at the end, we'll have about a 15, 20 minute call it group discussion. So turn your chair around, find somebody next to you, um, work and talk your way through that. Oh, we got another one. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I've got uh, one over here and one over there, two chairs, yep, good stuff. Um, and so your opening question this week, so we're going to be talking about who is God. I want you to take that little piece of paper you, you have. You're not going to turn it in. Don't put your name on it. Um, you don't have to share it to your neighbor. Certainly don't ask your neighbor what they think about this question. But um, if you were to jot down a couple words describing you, uh, what would they be? And then list a few historical figures or a movie scene or a clip it that might best represent you. I would love here in a second for someone to share uh, one or two of theirs. I promise I'll share mine um, in the context of it. But just, just take a minute, and this is going to help us center our thoughts. I'll do that, and then we'll pray, and then we'll get started. So while you're writing that down, you can keep thinking about it and noodling on it. I'll, I'll share mine. So the, the words that came to mind for me... So like I said, I'm a father of two boys, a husband. So the titles and roles, I'm a sales guy professionally. Uh, I'm a teacher and trainer of young men. I've been a coach. Uh, uh, the, the roles are the things that drew, were the things that first popped out as I sort of prayed through this uh, words to describe me. Uh, and the character I had, I was like, oh boy, where do I go with this? Like I, um, you know, either I'm gonna get in trouble because I'm gonna get labeled as something, uh, or uh, it's going to identify or define me. And so the challenge to my spirit as I was thinking through the figures or characters from TV and, and movies like, like what came to mind, and unfortunately or fortunately, depending on which, um, Seinfeld came to mind. I had like 0% of his humor talent, uh, but like 100% of his sarcasm. And uh, so as sarcastic as I possibly can be sometimes, it gets exhaust I even exhaust myself with it. Uh, but that's, that, you know, those are the things that, you know, as I project out, would, I would try to draw some familiarity towards in your mind. Now you have a picture, those of you who don't know me, you have a picture of me because I used those words, and the, but those words are loaded for you. Right? You may have an opinion of Seinfeld that you don't care for. You may have an opinion of fathers or coaches that has a negative connotation. Right? Um, but the importance is, is I created a picture for you in my mind based on how I described myself. Anybody else wanna share theirs real quick? Raise your hand and I'll... Anyone want to share the words describing them? It's like zero chance. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Bonus. You win uh, for the week. So I'm, I, I say that um, I'm loud, I'm opinionated, I'm unique, I'm colorful, and I also have a tendency to be violent and very angry. So yeah. I, try, I try to suppress those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honest and transparent. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And of course, the confident, loud, colorful person speaks up first, right? Yes, that's the way it works. Anyone else? Maybe a character? Yeah. Well, I, I guess when you write some words down. I wasn't even thinking about characteristics. I was thinking about roles. So yeah. It's interesting, like, I guess that, that's just to say something about me in general, that I define myself more as wife, mother, engineer, or whatever, instead of characters. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very common for us uh, to define ourselves, but the roles of what we do define us. Does that really define us, though? Do we bring, does that merely define us? It doesn't merely define us. Um, and the reason why I want you to start there, and you'll see how we pick it up, um, is the first week is going to be getting a picture that um, when we approach the Bible, when you open it, in general, we're going to get an opinion or a picture about the author. Now, that's a part of God's intent. So when we go into this question of who is God and how can we find out right, the purpose of why we are doing week one, it's so we can get to a point of understanding that one of the things we can get when we open God's word, regardless of what our knowledge and understanding is, um, is this idea that the creator, the author, is trying to tell us something about himself. Yeah, so the scripture we have up there, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you informed the earth from the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are God. So he's going to try to tell us uh, something about his self in the all right, so um, let's do a quick uh, room question, right? Uh, some of these, uh, it's so funny, depending on the audience and the group that uh, you're presenting to, some of these pictures resonate, and they're like, who is that guy in the top, and, you know, right for you people, right? They've never even seen that guy. Um, so the question is, anybody want to take, what is your picture of God? 
I say, who is God? What do you think of? I think God is uh, different to different people. Ah, different to different people, yeah. I mean, it's the same God, but the visual of him is different to different people. Yes, ma'am, hang on to that thought. We're going to hit it um, full front in a minute. Yep. I don't really have a picture of God. It's more of a feeling. Ah. So There's something undescribable beyond words, right, that isn't physical but is, right? Yeah, good. What else? Any other pictures you have? Okay. Yep. When I first moved here, which was about seven years ago, I had to go to the post office to get my mail for about three months. And when the traffic thinned out, I knew I had made the wrong turn. <laughs> and so I got lost every day when I did it. But when I pulled in the garage, I would always say, well, God, we made it home again. <laughs> <laughs> but I did not have a picture of yeah, but there's present, right? There's this this image of God I have is presence, right? The presence is a way to describe it. Any others? Yep. Um, as you know, my brother and I took it when you, when you uh, taught it before, and we grew up in the same household. When you asked this question, it was shocked me because I said that God was like a father figure, and we grew up without a father. He passed away when we were children, um, and so I said, "Oh, he's like a father," you know. And my brother viewed God as like on the throne, disciplinary, you know, mm-hmm. kind of this. And it just kind of looked at him, and I was a little bit shocked. We grew up in the same house, in the same church, and we had completely different views of that were, that were polar opposite. It was just kind of eye Yeah, you know, those, that's depending on your personal experience or the caricature that we get of God, and we'll talk about that, we bring a, a presupposed idea of who God is when, whether it's reading scripture or coming to church or just in our everyday lives, right? even how we pray. We have a presupposed idea of who God is, and that may be shaped by what we know, may be shaped by who we've been around, who we've listened to, what our influencers are, who, were, who is or uh, was or isn't or wasn't present in our lives. But this idea that uh, who God is and our picture of him can radically shape the, the experience that we have <coughs> Uh, when we get into scripture. So I want to expose you to this idea that you've got a caricature, a picture of God, that no matter how long you've been walking with him, no matter how long you've been studying scripture, no matter how long that God's been a part of your life, is incomplete. Now you may say, Chris, how do you know that? Well, there's a something about this, this God of ours uh, that when we look at uh, and understand what the Bible has to say about him is that he starts scripture. He starts his word with, in the beginning, God. There's something about him that is beyond his creation. So in general, um, this unknowable, uh, unimaginable, this big God has has exposed different facets of himself uh, to help us understand who he is. And he's done that in one very powerful way through his word. And so I draw these ideas because there are people who think of God on the throne. They maybe think of God as the police officer that do this or don't do that. The you know, law and the judge. There are people who think of God as very intimate and gentle. There are people who think of God as personal or funny. There are think people of God who, who think about God as, as a spirit. And it's not that any of those are um, untrue. It's that they're incomplete. So you've probably seen some variation of this picture before. Right? It all depends. So we all have this level of blindness uh, to who God is. And it all really depends on what facet that we're uh, examining him so we get a better understanding of who he is. And so if you're in the front and you have trunk, touching the trunk or uh, touching his uh, tusks at the elephant, you're going to think much differently than you're, if you're touching the sides, the top, or the tail. It's not unlike um, the way God reveals himself to us. Why is that important? Because throughout this Bible boot camp and throughout your journey with God, this is just one touch point that God has um, in your life. He's pursuing you uh, dearly to create a, a stronger relationship uh, than you have with him now. One of the touch points you will have with him will undoubtedly create a caricature. If you uh, listen to the sermon this morning, and Tim did a fantastic job opening up worship um, and said that uh, we have to find a way to, when we approach God's word, when we try to seek to understand him, maybe to check some of our preconceived notions of the door. Because then it might be difficult to reconcile when I read something that is inconsistent with what I know in the past about who God is. And then I make a judgment on that. Certainly that can't be the God I know. The God I know doesn't look like X or doesn't look like Y. Um, He wouldn't do Z. Maybe God's trying to reveal that he's bigger than what you think about um, him is. There are some key things that Matt touched on in the sermon that uh, we want to make sure that we uh, don't um, 
we don't fly by, uh, but aren't necessarily the core parts of what we're going to be uh, discussing here. There are elements of God that God reveals, again, one of the primary ways he does it is through his word, um, that he reveals to us uh, that give us a better understanding as we get into this boot camp and as we get into to Bible study or scripture or approaching God's word when we read it, um, that are really important lenses for us to understand. Like the first thing, that God is a relational being. He is a family in and of himself. We understand, um, again, big picture that we hear about, a big churchy word, this triune God, this three in one, something that we can't really understand, but he's a family and relational in and of himself, and he created us to be in relationship with him. So when we read this words, this idea of a distant God is inconsistent uh, with the complete picture of who God is. Yes, God is distant, God is holy, God is separate, but it's inconsistent. God is love. Matt, I won't even say anything, I can't do justice to the sermon that Matt delivered today. Uh, God is good. This one's hard for us to understand because so many times we bring to scripture, we bring to God our measuring stick of him, not his measuring stick of us. And so when we read scripture, when we study the Bible, when we try to get this picture of uh, I want to seek to understand who God is, I have to realize that God is the measuring stick, not me. God is spirit. Like Sandy said there's something beyond this physical world. There's something beyond us, uh, and God is beyond that. Yes, he's a part of that. He's with us. He's, um, he resides in us, but he is beyond us. So God, in a way that we can understand, is beyond this physical world. In the beginning, God. Right? Before creation, um, there was God. And yes, Scripture does point out this picture of understanding that God is both the lion and the lamb. Something that we sung about in worship today. I was laughing because uh, in the one song, uh, we were looking at both these word image pictures, like God's trying to describe himself through song that are echoed in scripture, um, but it's also layered on this other picture of God, which is his work working in, in the world. But the second part of that song was is God is the lion and the lamb. The second part of that song was God um, did some things for us. All right, so working out his plan. We'll look at that in a moment. But the understanding is, is that um, God has created a picture of who he is, and the primary way that he's revealed that um, is through, um, through God's words. Why? Why even bother? What's his end goal? This can be a challenging thing for some folks uh, when they look at scripture because, again, uh, your lens is through your human experience primarily. Um, and so when we don't quite check our uh, preconceived notions at the door, uh, we come to scripture and we um, we try to paint a picture of God that may not reconcile with what we're reading. At the end of the day, why is it important? Because this is what he wants. God wants to be glorified. God wants even you seeking him, we'll see here in a second, to glorify him. God wants you, your search, your looking for him to make his name famous in his creation. The thing that we, uh, you heard in the sermon this morning is, is that uh, we are uh, um, his image bearers to the world. There's nothing that God wants more than to be made famous. Now that may cause a check in some of our spirits, right? Well, well, how arrogant of God, how, how big and how super of God. Well, God's the creator. He chose to make this world the way he did. He chose to make you um, and the people he surrounded you with and the, the free will that Matt talked about this morning, uh, he chose it that way. And there's a benefit to us when we choose him and there's a benefit to God. God wants to be glorified. God wants to be glorified even when you search for him. When you search for him, you will find him when you search for him with your whole heart. Scripture promises us that we will find him. And in that finding him, you are changed and his name is made famous. It's the reason why he calls us to understand more about who he is. Uh, there are three primary ways that we connect uh, with God or we understand who God is. Uh, these won't be new if you've been at Parkway for a while. And that uh, uh, calls attention to it uh, very frequently. Uh, there are three uh, ways that we get a better understanding of who God is. But the one that we're going to be focusing on is this bottom one. We're going to talk about sort of the next eight and a half weeks now. Um, this, how do I unpack God's word to get a better understanding of who he is? And by doing that, uh, I uh, understand him better and am glorified. So God's word is what we're going to unpack. When we look at God's word, he shows us three primary things. He shows us who he is, his character. 
So those are the um, descriptions, the lion and the lamb. Those are elements of his character. We're going to, um, for the rest of the time together, you're going to um, talk about some of those word pictures. I've got some uh, word pictures for you that you can explore. Um, he's going to talk about his character. He wants you to understand who he is. Second thing is his plan. So his plan. So when we open up scripture, it started at the beginning. He created the world in a certain way. Uh, and then there is an arc through the rest of scripture that talks about how God's plan is working out according to his intentions. And to his glory and to our good. So whenever you read a particular verse or, or a particular section or you're in a Bible study or you're talking about something you open up, you're going you're to see, hey, are any of these two present? And then the last one is, how does it apply to me? Uh, if you um, have been coming here for any amount of time, Matt usually does uh, three points. Like, this is, why it's a, this is why it matters to us, the WIFM. There's a walkaway that says, I can learn something about God's path for me through Scripture. Now, so many times we try to go into Scripture and just merely say, what's in it for me? <laughs> And I promise that there's something that if we meditate on it enough, if we uh, read it and turn it over and turn it over, God will reveal that to you. But that's not the only thing that's in Scripture. And sometimes these three things intertwine themselves. There's a little bit of God's working out of his plan and a little bit of what it means to me and a little bit of who he is um, in all of the elements of uh, anything that we would open up. So as we go through boot camp, what you're going to learn and to understand as we're right now just exposing this understanding of who the author is, uh, is, is that you're going to open up a piece of God's word and it's going to say to you one of these three things. Why do you think that that's important? I'm going to take, why, why might it be having a perspective that when I read God's word that I might be looking at one or more of these? Doesn't it give you a sense of confidence that this story is there for a purpose. It's not just there for random. It's not just a, merely a capturing of Israel's history. Maybe it's you know, just not a moment in time or a point in time. Doesn't it connect you to this greater plan? Because, oh, by the way, you're a part of that scriptural journey too. Understanding this big arc that God has been intentionally working in his plan throughout um, revealing his care to you and showing you how um, to live is the central way right, as we the whole purpose of this is to connect together to better to connect, to connect better together um, and to break down or reduce some of the impediments that we have to understanding and reading scripture that each each time you open it there is something in there for you maybe the point that you have or maybe the point in time that you have that you're reading and ex exposing and examining scripture is so you can get a better understanding of God's plan because you're living in a time of uncertainty. God revealed to me, like, how, this, how am I connected to this? There are no perfect people in scripture short of Jesus Christ. It's filled with people with failures and family problems and uh, dysfunctional families and uh, people who make really poor choices. Uh, it's filled with those. Why? Because it would be really hard for us to relate to all the perfect people. And it's really hard for us to understand how God can use people who are loaded with failure still. So when you open scripture, you're gonna, these are the pieces that are going to be revealed to you. Uh, so uh, what we're about to do for the balance of our time together, um, we're going to split apart for a little bit. And you're going to have a little conversation. So think about groups of five or six. Right? You can turn chairs around. Um, just find you know, have whatever makes sense. We're allowed to reshape this room any way that we want it. Um, and we're going to look. I've got uh, some handouts and some things for you. We're going to look at that. Uh, who does God say that he is through this lens of the pictures that God uses to describe himself? So something really important that I learned uh, as I began studying uh, God's word is that I chose the pictures of God that most resonated with the God that I wanted to worship. It was hard for me when I stumbled across things that I either A, couldn't relate to, or B, didn't want to know about God. And there are times where God reveals himself in ways that challenges who he is and how big he is and how multidimensional, how multifaceted he can be. Um, but God uses innumerable ways in the physical world of the things that we would understand to understand different pieces about him. So think about that elephant picture that I um, put up before. And all of these pictures and all of these uh, scriptures that I'm about to hand you uh, are true about who he is. How can I check myself? How can I, how can I hold myself 
maybe back from uh, layering in some of those preconceived notions about who God is so I can unpack what he might be trying to reveal about me. So that's where we're going to go. I'm going to pray for you before we get started um, because this is, the, this is the enriching time together. Uh, if, you, if you turn your chairs around and you uh, see a face that's unfriendly, uh, make a name, write it on that piece of paper I gave you, and then find him next week right? and to say, hey, I remember you. Uh, I may have to do the same thing for you. So let me pray for you, God. We, uh, we're so grateful that you've brought us together as a church family, uh, as individuals uh, making a part of your church whole. Father, as we turn to your word this morning, I just ask that you reveal something new and fresh about us. And when you reveal something new and fresh about us, uh, maybe when it causes us to either gravitate towards a picture or shy away from it, uh, let your Holy Spirit work in that moment so that we can uh, better understand like, why we might have those preconceived notions, why we might be a little bit uh, apprehensive about seeing you in a certain way. And what might you be revealing uh, about who you are through your word? Father, we're, uh, we're blessed to be together, uh, and we're blessed to have this time to spend uh, with you in your word. In Jesus Christ's holy, precious, and powerful name I pray. Amen. All right, so uh, here's what's going to happen. Um, I've got some handouts for everybody. Um, let's see, I might need to make a couple extra copies, so I think I've got 40. We definitely have more than 40 in here, so I'm going to ask you to share. Um, I, uh, you're going to have a one scripture packet for every group, um, so if you can just hand that scripture packet around and maybe let someone read it, like so the four or five of you, one person read one of the verses, one person read another of the verses, um, and after each verse, you're going to stop and say, what word picture is in there? And... How is it speaking to me? If you've got your Bibles, you're going to have the references on the card, so you'll be able to, um, to look at those too. Um, so what is the word picture that God is trying to reveal, um, and what does it say? Why am I drawn to it? Uh, what maybe something new that you didn't know about that God has for you in there? Uh, and then uh, we'll gather as a group, and I've got one closing question for you. So we'll uh, take about another 20 minutes on that activity. We should be able to wrap up uh, with about five till. Um, so with that, let's uh, turn around and... and uh, All right, we're back to uh, wrap up. So uh, anyone want to share something that stuck out with them about one of these pictures that they were particularly drawn to? Something that was affirming or something that was, yep, that's the way I envision God. You're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so sometimes we go to scripture seeking, you know, God's the, the do's and do nots. A lot of those verses were Old Testament, right, by intention. So, and some of them were to affirm, but I was trying to break out the, the mold on a couple of them to draw her, like, ah, oh, yeah, look for the ones. Where's God is my rock? Where's God is my um, redeemer, my reliever? Yep. What else? Any surprise you? The one that I omitted on the cheat sheet, did anybody go read this one? I think uh, we always, because it, it's so often identified, uh, that God identifies himself in the masculine sense. That when we see scripture that uh, have more feminine or uh, motherly attributes about who God is, it opens our eyes to maybe a different uh, piece of relationship that we could have with God. Uh, anyone that, uh, so a wrap up question, let me jump forward here and this. Um, is there anything that it revealed about you? <coughs> anything that you made an observation that how the way God unveiled himself in scripture said something about who you were in him? Maybe this is the question that you walk away with, not something that we answer in here, but think about the way God is revealing himself to you, or God is revealing himself to the people um, in whom he was speaking to at that particular point in time. What message did he want to get across? And and the ones that you were drawn to, what does it say about who you were? Or maybe the ones that you were more eager to reject. What does that say about us? Because remember, if we believe that God's Spirit is speaking to, um, to us through His Word, then there's something about that, that deeper connection, maybe the lack of the deep, maybe the, the running from, is saying it's in a way that God's trying to reach us. So there is something more beyond this. The thing, the concept that I want to wrap you up with, right, this thought I want you to walk out of, um, is, is that we're going to let God define who he is. 
it's too easy for us to define the God that we want to worship. We're going to avoid that. In these next eight weeks now that you're going to be in here, they're going to expose you to ideas and concepts that are going to allow you to uncover uh, what God has about himself, what he wants to reveal himself to you. And we're going to let him do it through his word. We're not going to do it through what the media tells us. We're not going to do it through the sources of people who you know, may have good perspective, but might not be Holy Spirit led. We're not going to let the world define our God to us. We're going to let God define himself to us. And inevitably that's going to create some tension and challenge places for us. And in a churchy word that we'll learn and unpack, that is um, sanctification. That is the process of God making us the people, the men and the women who he has us to be since the beginning of time. He's planned for you to have a different experience with him than anybody else. Same God, same attributes. He's going to grow you in the way that he's created you since the beginning of time to be. We're going to let him do that. We're not going to let the world do that for us. That, so this is part one. Part one wrap up. We will, uh, I'll pray for you and then we'll be able to get out of here. Uh, part two of the introduction will be what is the Bible and how would I study it? All right, so I'm going to give you a tool, uh, and then for the four weeks after that, we're going to be looking at some Old Testament te themes, and then the three and a half weeks after that, we're going to be looking at some New Th Testament themes. Uh, but it's going to, the purpose of next week is to give us the tool that's going to help us unpack um, the rest of this boot camp. So I am so appreciative for you all to be here. It's good to get to know and to meet a few of you. Uh, I look forward to sitting in a group uh, next week and have some conversations with you, so that'll be pretty cool too. Uh, but uh, let's wrap, and then we'll get out of here. Father God, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for what your word reveals uh, to us about who you are. Thank you for the people that you've put into our lives, uh, the opportunity that we have to worship you so freely. Father, let us take every one of those opportunities and do something amazing with it. Let's take every one of those opportunities for the people you put in our lives, the, the gentle and the meek and the ones that it's easy to love and even the people who maybe you've just met and don't know at all or the people we've known for a long time and um, that can be a challenge for us. Our selfishness manifests uh, itself in those relationships. Um, let, us, let us learn to love in the way that you love. Father, let us learn more about you and the way that you want to reveal yourself to us. Father, let us use your word this week maybe with new confidence that, to, to open it up for the first time in a long time, maybe the first time ever, with an eye just to say, I want to learn who you are, God. Reveal to me something about you and about your character uh, through Scripture. Father, send us out this week to be the, the men and the women that you've printed us since the beginning of time to be. Help us to grow on our journey with you um, as we walk in your Son, Jesus Christ's footsteps. In his, in his holy, precious, and powerful name.